very good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are from. I welcome you all to the session two of day one on critical thinking, a pedagogical perspective of the seven day online international faculty development program on language and literature, a pragmatic approach organized by the Department of English of VET Institute of Arts and Science, Erode. I welcome our principal, Dr. Saravanan R., also the patron of the program, Dr. Shakila Matthew, Dean Academics, Head Department of English and convener of the program, Mr. Logesh Kumar S., Administrative Officer, members of the Faculty of English from VET Institute of Arts and Science, Erode, and the Teaching Fraternity of English Language and Literature from around the world to the session. A dream for a student truly begins when a teacher believes in him or her. Today's resource person, Dr. Yuvraj A., not only helps students dream, but also helps in synthesizing their dream into a reality by teaching beyond the classroom. Dr. Yuvraj is an assistant professor of English in Garment Pirumagal Mills College, Guriyattam, Beldur. He did his undergraduation in Presidency College, Chennai, and his post-graduation and Master of Philosophy in the University of Madras, Chennai. His astonishing order in research led him to earn his doctorate from Anna University, Chennai. His areas of expertise include learning language literature, child language learning, bilingualism, and teacher education. His enchanting career in academia sprawls over two decades of rich teaching and research experience in various prestigious institutions. The wisdom that he has gained through this observing career is reflected in his presentations in national and international conferences and publication of research papers in refereed national and international journals. His painstaking effort in organizing various workshops, seminars, and training programs for the comprehensive development of the academic fraternity reflects his unserving commitment to the passion teaching. Sir, we request you to enlighten the participants through your session on critical thinking, a pedagogical perspective. Thank you, Madam, for the wonderful introduction. At the outset, I would like to thank the management, the dean, principal, and the faculty members of the English department for the wonderful opportunity. Good afternoon to one and all present uh, there, all my dear participants. I would like to start my presentation on uh, critical thinking, a pedagogical perspective. And Sir, before can you that, make a little louder if I'm interrupting you? A little louder, yeah. sir. Is it, is it okay now? now? Is it better yeah, now? Yes, sir. Perfect, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. So I thought I would just. Uh, take a look at this particular word, thinking. We have critical thinking. I thought I would just take this word, thinking, and uh, take all of you on a trip down memory lane to our classrooms, all of us, to our classrooms, either in school or in college. Yes, our teachers would have definitely asked us questions, and uh, sometimes we would have answered. Sometimes we would have answered correctly, sometimes the answer would not have been correct. And then the response from the teacher definitely would have been, why don't you think? Think an answer. Yes, this experience, I think almost all of us definitely would have had either in school or in college. And uh, another context which uh, comes to my mind is a, a sort of a, a personal one. Assume your friend comes and tells uh, you, I'm planning to quit my uh, uh, this particular uh, profession, for example, teaching. And I'm much, uh, I'm really interested now in uh, writing or in journalism. What would be our answer? Our answer would be yes, uh, go ahead, but think a million times. Definitely we'll say, think a million times. So thinking is part and parcel of us. All of us think. And that is why I think all of us are here right now. And now the, the first word that is critical. So this word again reminds me of uh, 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 the question paper. I think uh, this particular word critical is one of the favorite words of, uh, of any question paper setup. So this again reminds me of my uh, uh, school as well as college days, especially 
your uh, uh, English uh, question paper, the word critical definitely appears. I think even now it appears in almost all English question papers, if you take a look at it. Critically uh, analyze words, words, daffodils, or attempt a critical appreciation of the poem, la belletta and sans mercy. Fine. So appreciating itself is a problem. So then where is the question of critically appreciating? Okay, as, uh, as a student, I used to, uh, I, I never used to think about it because whatever the question is, whether it is critically appreciate or whether it is substantiate or whether it is analyze, the answer was the same. Maybe uh, that would be the case for almost most of us, ex excluding a few of them who really understood what exactly the, uh, uh, the, the question paper setter means by the word critical thinking. So these are the thoughts that just came to my mind when I was uh, sort of thinking, or I would say pondering on these two uh, uh, words, critical thinking. And with that, I would like to move on to the first uh, slide. first slide is thinking thing. Again, I was reminded of a famous declaration made by Descartes, a French philosopher. Sorry to interrupt you again, sir. Can you please keep the microphone closer to your mouth? Most of the participants say the audio is very low. I'm just keeping it very close, sir. Like I'm keeping it very close. In fact, uh, okay, is it better so now? Is it, is it better now? Or uh, can you just give me a minute? Shall I change my microphone and I'll... Uh, I mean, yes, or? sir. Yes, sir. We'll, have, just we'll, we'll a take second. a minute. Yes. Just a second. Just a minute. Hello. Yes, sir. But is it better now? Please yes, check and let me know. Yes, sir. That. It's yeah. better, sir. Thank yeah, you. Thank sir. you so much. So the, uh, the, the again, uh, I was again reminded of Descartes, a, a famous French philosopher, mathematician, and a scientist. And I think most of us, I think, would be familiar. I think, therefore, I am. And it is uh, from his discourse on method. So I'm not just going into the philosophical aspects of what he exactly meant by I think, therefore I am. It is just a thought which I had, it was like haunting, I would say, ever since I uh, said yes to be a part of this uh, erudite group. So he says, I am a thing that thinks, a thing capable of thinking. So this is, this is what sets him. He says like, when I introspect or when I question myself, how do I believe that I exist? He says, the fact that I exist is because I think. Now, I just want to describe or sort of bring uh, to the attention of the learned audience, uh, the, the learners in our classrooms, learners in our ESL classroom, that is English as a second language classroom. So we all know that they come from underserved communities. So they come from uh, socio-economically backward uh, commun I mean, families. And uh, just to remind you, I'm teaching in a government dance college for the past five years. And so my presentation would largely focus on them. There would be some participants, some professors who might be teaching in a different uh, setup. And I think they can, to a large extent, relate to this. So uh, these learners in an English classroom, in an English second language classroom, they share a certain commonalities or what we call the common, uh, I would say traits, but there are certain things which are common in them. So that's what I have listed out. 
that is high anxiety and low self perception so that is quite obvious you know they have a lot of anxiety and uh, and they have a low self concept so that is what i which i i think in this the slide you can see what do i mean by uh, self concept it is how an individual views himself or herself based on their habits on their temperament on their skills they have a very lower self concept or self efficacy which to an extent or to a large extent uh, make the uh, make these learners unsure of their learning skills they are not very sure of their learning skills what have i learned because i think uh, as teachers in uh, higher education definitely you know when they come to the first year we find them that uh, they they have got a pass in their high secondary but uh, do they possess the requisite skills the necessary skills which they ought to have uh, possessed it's a debatable topic again why uh, 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 what is the reason for their anxiety again when they step into the portals of higher education or even at the school level tests and assessments yes test related anxiety plays a major role or a significant role so even right now my students call me up and ask me do we have in semester exams because now we are not very sure whether we have in semester exams or not because we are just waiting for the instructions from the government so students uh, they just want that kind of uh, an answer uh, yes or no do we have exams or do we don't have exams because for them exams and marks and grades play an important role it is not because it's not their fault it is as we all know our uh, uh, educational setup is largely marks based and uh, we all know again how much of importance is given to grades again do we uh, uh, do we give utmost importance to the skills or the knowledge they have uh, acquired or the uh, actual marks they have scored in the end semester examination or in their uh school leaving certificate or whatever it is so these are the commonalities which we find in almost 90% of our learners in higher education barring a few so i think i just made a reference there will be teachers or professors who are working in uh, universities wherein they might have to uh, interact with learners who uh, who do not share these uh, aspects but i am pretty sure that uh, maybe the percentage is more here there it could have been uh, sort of less for example i mean even in in top rated uh, universities say 60 to 70% of them are from uh, uh, i mean the, the learning skills are very good even there i think 20 to 30% of the learners need our help yeah so now the important question of uh, do learners ask questions so the the most important aspect of critical thinking so i would sort of relate to critical thinking so we need to ask ourselves the question do my i mean is i mean is my learner capable of asking questions not capable in the sense i'm not uh, speaking in a very uh, in a, in, a, in a in a different sense you know they are really capable but i'm asking do they muster courage to ask questions in the classroom most of them i mean it's i'm talking based on my experience no except for a few and that too we have to do a lot of uh, convincing we have to coax them we have to persuade them you have to take i mean sometimes we do lot of uh, things you know to make my learner open his mouth and ask a question so this is what happens generally and what are the reasons again when we uh, think of uh, first uh, what into my mind was is the disengaged learning environment so when i say learning environment it need not be only the school or the college it is even at home so uh, in this uh, context i'm reminded of uh, professor ml tikus uh, article in which he talks about uh, language uh, poor acquisition environments he says majority of our learners come from language acquisition poor environment so what do i mean by that they don't have a uh, language uh, in this in the situation it is like uh, in this context it is english 
there is no opportunity for the learners to pick up language. So we all know acquisition is picking up language. So they come from such, uh, uh, I mean, such families wherein the only source is the teacher. There is no other academic support, either the father or the mother, I don't know to what extent they'll be educated. Will they be in a position to clarify their doubts? And uh, do they have access to newspapers? Do they have access to technology? All these are debatable questions. Again, learning environment in college, is it really engaging? Are the learners really interested in the process of learning? To what extent am I engaging my learners? And uh, the next uh, point which I have listed out there is, uh, it is the learner's perception, it is not my observation. They generally think teachers are more demanding. So I'm listing out the reasons why learners never ask questions in the classroom, which again is very important why I'm talking about asking questions, because the first and foremost important quality a learner should possess is to ask questions. Only then we can move on to the next level of uh, making him uh, critically uh, analyze a situation or uh, apply all those critical evaluation skills or critical thinking skills as we call it right now. So another uh, reason why learners are uh, sort of reticent or uh, inhibited or they never ask questions is the fear of getting ridiculed. That's quite uh, obvious. Uh, the, uh, the, the peers, the learner is worried about his peers. What if I ask something, if I say something or if I ask a question and if it's not an appropriate question, what would be the reaction of the teacher? And more than that, he's worried about his friends or peers in the classroom. And again, in our system of education, the focus is more on learners' weaknesses rather than on the strengths. Because as teachers, I think that, I mean, that, I mean I'm talking about, I'm talking in general. Sometimes, I mean, we focus on the weakness of the learner and not on the strengths. Uh, just to give an example, while marking answers in the end semester, I mean, in the in uni, uh, unit test or in the end semester examinations, we just sometimes we nitpick, we just find faults and we try to penalize them. Grammar mistakes, yes, there are spelling mistakes. So that again would demotivate a learner. He might think, okay, fine, what if I ask a question and if I, if, will I be penalized by the teacher? That question definitely will be in his mind, in his or her mind. And then is the affective filter. And uh, one of the uh, hypotheses by uh, Stephen Krashen in his natural approach, he talks about the five different hypotheses. I'm not going to go at length. The, one of the hypotheses is the affective filter hypothesis, which says second language learners are generally inhibited. They have their own anxiety. And if the affective filter is more, language learning is less. So this we can generalize even to any type of learning. So learning in the sense like if, the, if they are uh, anxious, if they are stressful, they cannot learn. Learning cannot happen. So the, that, the effective filter is more, learning is less. And if the, if, the, if the learner wants to learn, then he should be really an extrovert. He should not be worried about the, I mean, of, uh, making mistakes or errors. And he has to understand, fine, what is the big deal? Even if I make a mistake or even my peers laugh at me, I just don't give that much of importance. And if he has that ability, if he has that mindset, yes, he will definitely ask questions and interact in the classroom. Now the focus is on teachers, uh, teaching. Yeah, one of the nobl noblest professions, definitely. Uh, now I'm going to uh, bring in the, uh, the, the ideas uh, listed out, whatever points are listed out, are by uh, John Dewey, American philosopher. In his thinking in education, he lists out these important aspects. He reiterates the need for instructional methods that promote and test thinking. So he says, like, if you want your learners to think, if you want to learn us, the next step is critical thinking. First, let's talk about thinking. So uh, then I thought I would just move on to the next, uh, uh, the, 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 the core aspect of my presentation is critical thinking, but thinking and critical thinking, yes, we have talked about thinking to make uh, sense of what critical thinking is all about. 
So uh, John Tweese says, uh, reiterates the need for instructional methods that the way we teach should promote and uh, it should give opportunities for the learners to display their thinking ability, maybe in an informal way, not in a very formal uh, method. And he is uh, uh, he, he vehemently opposes transmission style methods of instruction. So I think all of us, I think, must be aware of what he means by transmission style methods of instruction. So nothing but we just um, the teachers as the sole authority as the power teacher the, the power center of the teacher because he he or she is the knowledge provider he is going to provide the knowledge and uh, the learner is supposed to receive the knowledge so that is what we mean by transmission style methods lecture method maybe to put it in very simple terms lecture methods we go to class we teach we share our knowledge with them and we believe yes the learners have uh, understood or comprehended. And again, we have to think of whether whatever input we give is, is that equal to intake. Input, uh, research studies point out, in the input I give is not equal to intake. Need not be because of, again, there are many factors why my input is not equal to learner's intake. Then he emphasizes the significance of finding appropriate challenges for learners. Learners uh, should be challenged to an extent, at least, which is why he says they should be challenged because only that gives them an opportunity for reflective thinking. So what is reflective thinking? They should try and understand, why am I learning this? What, are the, uh, what is the purpose of my sitting in the classroom? If the learner develops those thinking abilities, yes, it is really going to help him, her, uh, him or her a lot. Then he places the, uh, the onus on the teachers to create learning opportunities for educative experiences. So here he talks about educative experiences and miseducative experiences. So educative experiences, uh, by, by that he means uh, the education which support, uh, education that supports one's chances for growth. So whether the learner gets opportunities for growth, it could be in terms of knowledge, in terms of, in terms of acquiring skills, or it could be in terms of uh, how do I uh, perform or how do I survive in this competitive world, okay? So in that way, if my teaching is going to create opportunities for learners uh, uh, and give opportunities for this educative experiences, he says that is required. That is what is essential. And uh, I think by now, all of us would have guessed what, he, what does he mean by miseducative experiences, exactly the opposite of educative, which means which distorts a person's chance at further growth. So these are the ideas which John Dewey talks about in thinking in education. This is to do with the role of teachers, what teachers can do, or what is the link between uh, thinking and teaching in a classroom. Yeah, so now I would like to bring Aristotle's notion of phrenesis. So you might be thinking, why all those, why do we have to know all these things? Because I thought towards, uh, as the as my presentation proceeds, uh, somewhere I just, uh, uh, I hope that the, 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 the link could be to an extent obvious. So what is um, uh, Aristotle's, what is a, 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 phrene, a, a, phrene, a phrenesis? It is nothing but our practical wisdom. So what do I mean by practical wisdom? Nothing but again, prudence. Again, to give an example, uh, we might read a lot of theories, uh, theories and uh, learning theories or uh, language learning theories, Yes, but sometimes we feel what is the use of these theories because as uh, years go by, I, uh, I have a lot of, I've gained experience. I have practical knowledge and some teachers, they might think of their own theories in the classroom. This is what we mean by phrenesis. And uh, again, there is one important distinction which we have to, I mean, one important uh, point which we have to observe is phrenesis also means that the teacher's ability to take decisions at the moment, while in the classroom. Sometimes we might have uh, experienced this situation 
go with the mindset. We have a lesson plan when we might go to the classroom to deliver the lecture or to make the class interactive. Sometimes it might not work. So there our prudence, our, our practical wisdom comes into play. So it is very essential, he says, that no, teachers have this practical wisdom. Again, uh, to, uh, uh, to talk from the language uh, point of view. So assume like we give them a lot of uh, exposure to reading tasks. That's one of the ways in which learners gain some, uh, or they are exposed to, to the language. And uh, again, language, the role of language and uh, thought, one cannot deny because that is very essential because when we uh, talk about or when we discuss uh, critical thinking or thinking, we need to be aware of the, of the role of language because language uh, shapes to a large extent or the, the, st uh, the structure of a language uh, fix the, the knowledge. That is what we mean by, to an extent, the, the, the schemata of the learners uh, uh, gets modified to an extent by uh, the lang by language. So language uh, plays a very crucial role in the thought process and uh, the structure of a language affects the, the uh, person's view or its cognition, as we call it in, uh, in, in linguistic terms. And this particular concept is what we refer to as linguistic determinism. So your ling the linguistic abilities of the learner determines his thought. So uh, exposure to uh, uh, what we call uh, input or uh, uh, comprehensible input is very essential for learners to develop their thought process. So we have to always have the link between language and thought because without language, uh, the, 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 there's a theoretical study or sometimes people try to prove by research studies to what extent our, our uh, language influences our thought. So uh, the similar idea, I think, uh, by another researcher, uh, he says teaching demands thoughtful interactions and decision making, making guided by principles. So as teachers, we need to be very careful of, of our interactions. The interactions should be thoughtful inside the classroom because they influence the notion of teaching as a reflective practice. So the word reflective is applicable not only for the learners, but also for the teachers. As teachers, I need to reflect, reflect on my teaching. So to what extent my teaching uh, was successful today, to what extent I had to uh, tweak a bit or I have to modify my style of delivery or should I have to uh, try other methods. For example, now to give an example, now uh, because of this COVID situation, we have taken to online teaching, which is fairly new to our uh, to, to the Indian context. So now we are trying different ways to engage our learners. How can I engage my learners? That is a challenge which as uh, teachers we all face right now. Yeah. So now uh, the focus on uh, critical thinking. So what uh, exactly is a critical thinking? And before uh, I, uh, I just uh, discuss what critical thinking is all about, we need to understand there are different uh, theories, but uh, due to lack of time, I cannot uh, talk about all those theories, but there are a few theories which are relevant to the field of education. So one or two, for example, At Atkinson, Atkinson's uh, model, it is not a theory, he proposed a model, which uh, he calls it as cultural specificity model. And uh, what is the idea, what, is, what does he want to uh, propagate? He says, the, the culture of the learner is largely responsible for the way he, he or she thinks. And then uh, we have to uh, we have to just remind ourselves that uh, uh, like our learners are by nature, but I mean by uh, because of the cultural in uh, the, the, the culture in which we are, they are uh, reticent. You know, they are very silent. They don't uh, have the courage, or they have been conditioned like that. I would say because even at home, we would have had the situation if there are elders at home and if they are discussing an important issue. And if a small boy or a girl 
opens his mouth and says something, you know the answer. I think uh, most of us uh, had a bitter experience. The moment if you open your mouth and say in front of the elders, you are silenced. They'll say, shut up, shut your mouth because you don't have any business to talk when the elders are discussing. So this is what we mean by the, the culture from which we are, which we come generally, the Asian learners. So uh, uh, Atkinson says, uh, the, uh, I mean, Asian learners do not think critically or do not uh, uh, think critically because it could be because of this particular reason. And uh, this model was uh, criticized. It was later criticized because uh, 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 the other theorists, uh, they argued like, we cannot just entirely blame on the, the cultural aspects and, and, and we cannot just uh, allow our learners to think or allow our learners to uh, think critically. So uh, the, uh, this particular model I thought would be relevant before we understand critical thinking in this particular context. So uh, what is critical thinking? Uh, critical thinking is a reflective and reasonable thinking that is focused on deciding what to believe or do. So this is by Innes, uh, again, uh, one of the theorists in uh, critical thinking, and he uh, uh, sort of uh, formulated a, a taxonomy of critical thinking, which is, uh, I would say, somewhat similar to research. So doing a research, uh, uh, for, for instance. So when we do a research, we first gather information and then we zero in on the topic and then we formulate the hypothesis, then we analyze the data and then finally we uh, infer. So it is somewhat similar, but not exactly the same, but somewhat similar. Uh, since I have uh, mentioned uh, research, I just want to again, uh, 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 just to uh, share with you uh, how critical thinking is very important or indispensable for research scholars, especially. So when somebody uh, uh, wants to do research, uh, say for example, 20 years before, when technology wasn't uh, uh, developed so much, when uh, about the click of a mouse, now we get a lot of information. What did we all do? We had to look, physically go to different libraries, hunt for material and check to see whether the topic has been researched already or not. But now, uh, it is a, a sort of a situation, uh, what, what, what do we call as a catch-22 situation for uh, a, a budding researchers. Now, with the click of a mouse, they get uh, material just flooding, plenty of material, the problem of plenty, I would say. So they get ample material, but now there comes the catch. How do I zero in on? So how do I pick that particular uh, strand where, how do I find a gap in this particular research? That becomes a real challenge. Here comes the importance of critical thinking. Unless and until the, can, the, research, uh, who, uh, the candidate who aspires to complete this research is, is very, uh, applies all the uh, uh, skills, critical thinking skills like uh, uh, he, he has to evaluate, he has to analyze, and then he has to, he or she uh, 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 has to find the, the, the gap that is why we say like review of literature is very crucial for a research study because if the, re the review is not done properly, then there are chances that we might repeat the, uh, the same work, which might not be validated by the examiners later on. So in this context, again, critical thinking comes into play, or I would say it's very essential. So there are umpteen definitions of critical thinking, but I have chosen this particular definition, which I thought makes it pretty simple at the same time, we can all relate to. So it is uh, the task of deciding what to believe. Again, uh, the, the, the issue of uh, 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 the famous uh, uh, sentence I'm reminded of, uh, especially in grammar class, seeing is believing. When, uh, uh, when somebody teaches gerund, uh, the famous line is seeing is believing. But now, can we really say seeing is believing with this information overload? We have so much of information around which makes critical thinking essential, I would say. So uh, the, the, the next uh, point, it has become a prerequisite for uh, postmodern competencies. So uh, it has become, uh, I mean, uh, the, people call it as the 21st century skills, and it is highly essential to develop postmodern competencies like uh, the learner has to innovate, he has to create, 
and he has to be very skilled in his communication and in art of negotiation. So in case if he has to negotiate in workplaces, in if you want to, if he wants to participate in group discussions, yes, uh, uh, critical thinking skills, uh, I would say play an indispensable or crucial role. And again, critical thinking is goal directed and it is aimed towards an end and it is purposeful. So this is what uh, is what is my, uh, I thought I would share with you all. And then again, it is uh, just a, a quite self-explanatory. Why critical thinking? That is to meet complex demands. So the demands in the future, we never know what kind of demands workplaces might have, schools might have, colleges might have, we never know. So uh, to meet such complex demands, we need critical thinking and then to identify issues relevant to the future and make decisions based on wide perspective. Again, that is the key word here, wide perspective. Taking decisions from multiple perspectives. That is again, a, the, one of the most important aspects of critical thinking. So to what extent the argument is valid or to what extent the argument is flawed? This again, this, the, 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 these uh, questions are quite common in competitive examinations, what we call it as uh, syllogisms. So, uh, 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 and more so in, uh, in exams like uh, uh, GRE or GMAT. So in those examinations, they will be given a short uh, case study and they'll ask them to, there will be too many, uh, three or four uh, distractors as we call them, but each one would sound equally valid. But unless and until the person employs this uh, thinking ability and he has to, arrive at the best answer possible because all the answers might seem equally valid but some the, but but the but only one answer is uh, uh, logically based on the evidence only one argument will be valid so in this context yes critical thinking becomes highly essential and then to respond to changing situations yes uh, we are exactly facing the situation which is very uh, what we call a transitory. We never know what's going to happen. A lot of uncertainty that is prevailing. So we need to learners and teachers, I think we need to equip ourselves in order to uh, face the challenges and which involves again, a lot of thinking and uh, to be a reflective learner. I think I uh, mentioned what reflective learning is all about. So the question of how do we do this? We we have uh, we know okay critical thinking is important in all these uh, as in all these areas and you name any domain yes critical thinking is very important. So how do we promote? And now most important uh, the most uh, uh, influential personality is a Brazilian uh, philosopher Paulo Freire, who brought in the concept who criticized the banking concept of education or the jug and mug approach to education. So he says, if you're going to still follow this banking concept, so again, banking concept is nothing but we are as though we are depositing our knowledge to our learners without giving the due importance to the learners' abilities, to, uh, without understanding that our learners can think. Or if you're going to follow the jug and mug approach, again, uh, the mind of the learner is a clean slate. And uh, the, the, the the teacher is supposed to fill the mug. So that is what is the idea that what we call it is tabula rasa. So if you're going to stick on to that particular method of teaching, then critical thinking, chances are very bleak, he says. And uh, he also advocates an approach which links learners to the environment in which learning takes place. Again, somewhat similar to Vygotsky's uh, uh, I mean, uh, theory of learning. So Vygotsky talks about uh, both Piaget and Vygotsky give equal importance to schemata, that is the knowledge and structures. But Vygotsky differs from Piaget in this particular aspect. He says, if the learner's uh, schemata is to be modified or if the learners have to reach to the next level, it is essential that the learners interact. Interaction and uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, the, the, the culture and the interaction, he says, these both aspects play a crucial role in altering the schemata of the learner. So this is somewhat similar to Vygotsky's uh, approach. And he, again, he talks about uh, the zone of 
proximal development too. So then uh, uh, the next important point is he, he says we have to take into account the affective, moral, physical and cognitive aspects of individuals. So these aspects need to be taken into account before we uh, or, uh, st start this venture, before we, we, we think, okay, to, uh, to, uh, when we think of our learners, who my learners are. Okay. Now, so the, the ideas I borrowed from uh, a book by uh, Kumar Vadivelu, uh, I think it's uh, Beyond Methods, yes. So there he talks about the three strands of thought and uh, these three strands, strands of thought are to do with the role of the teacher. So from the historical perspective, he talks from the historical perspectives. So uh, perspective. So he, uh, the first is the, I mean, there are three I have listed out or I have just borrowed, but the last one is uh, sort of central to the whole discussion. That is teachers as transformative intellectuals. Again, uh, the, I, this particular idea uh, I mean, was quite uh, influenced by Apollo Freire's uh, uh, concept. But before that, I thought it would it would be uh, uh, you know uh, it would make a lot of sense, or it would be it would have this coherence if I talk about teachers as passive technicians, teachers as reflective practitioners, and then move on to teachers as transformative intellectuals. Yeah. So, what do we mean by uh, teachers as passive technicians? So uh, he says, uh, uh, when, uh, uh, when, we, uh, when we follow this particular approach, that is what we call as the technicist or transmission approach to teaching. So I think I've explained what is technicist or transmission approach. And uh, it is the traditional role we generally see. Uh, the role of the teacher is, it's a traditional role which we see a teacher as uh, one who transmits knowledge, which is prevalent even now in many, many countries. And uh, what they believe is that the, the, the idea of a, a group of professional experts or people who talk about who have those the theorists the idea is theorists and teachers so the professional experts they create and contribute to professional knowledge they create knowledge and uh, what is the role of the classroom teacher is to share the content knowledge so i go to class and i share my knowledge and i get back so this was uh, this was one of the approaches. We cannot say whether we cannot debate on this because it depends on the content which we teach, depends on the group of learners uh, whom we teach. This is one of the uh, roles or one of the approaches we, I would say, wherein the, the the teachers are viewed as passive technicians, but uh, uh, critical pedagogists they point out that this as time goes on, this uh, this approach might become very passive and unchallenging because there is no interaction in the classroom, the excitement is lost. So he says uh, the teachers might lose that uh, excitement or the idea of going to class because your class will not throw surprises. That is what he says, uh, the, the idea. So when I go to class and, and daily, if I faithfully go teach and share my content, what is the excitement there? So that might get lost. And it is also essential that we, we make an analysis in the current situation when learners have access to knowledge at the click of a mouse on any topic under the sun, if it is uh, American literature, be it phonetics or uh, whatever it is, by the click of a mouse, you have ample material. But then how do I uh, justify or how do I say that, yes, my role in the classroom is essential? That is what is the question raised by critical pedagogists. And the next is uh, teachers as reflective practitioners. Again, so the idea is uh, uh, teachers as problem solvers. Gradually, we do have teachers who are who, who uh, do a lot of action research, who uh, uh, try to solve problems in their own way possible, who can think critically and analytically. And uh, they are uh, aware of the teaching context. Again, the teaching context in which we uh, work is ultimately important. That is what, again, when we talk about the, uh, the, uh, the communicative methods of, teach, uh, methods of teaching and learning or activity-based learning, uh, sometimes you know, people uh, uh, are quite skeptical of the whole idea because we have to ask ourselves, is my teaching context uh, relevant? Uh, is it relevant for me to 
try out all these things but again it is not against one particular methodology all methods uh, are equally relevant but the question is uh, we have to analyze the teaching context and then act accordingly that is what is the idea so uh, we need to be aware of the teaching context and take action grounded in intellectual thought and then the uh, the, the issue of uh, reflection or in the, the points uh, are uh, reflection on action and reflection in action nothing but when when we uh, devise a lesson plan or when we uh, when we plan for our lesson uh, plan how to deliver our lesson sometimes we after the class we come and we'll reflect on that or after a, uh, say after a week or so sometimes we'll reflect what did i do in the class for the past one week that is what he calls it as a reflection on action and reflection in action is in the classroom when the class is going on as i think i mentioned this earlier make uh slight adjustments and modifications in the teaching process and this is uh, referred to as pedagogical tact okay to what extent the, the learner has the pedagogical tact to modify the, the the plan or modify his or her delivery in a way that would uh, make the learners understand or to what extent i can try and make my learners find meaning in the whole process so that is what again is very important meaning making when the learners find some meaning in the classroom or in the lessons we discuss in the class then uh, i think it's it's almost like after the battle is won so uh, but uh, uh, the the next uh, uh, role uh, uh, of teachers as uh, transformative intellectuals and before that i just want to pause and tell you that uh, they uh, the, the critical pedagogists they they had an issue with this particular approach of reflective practitioners because in this approach uh, the importance was given to the teacher alone teachers need to introspect and it, teaching was not viewed as an interactive process so the learners the colleagues the planners the administrators they don't come into the picture so they are not quite happy so they say like it's not an interactive process it's a good that teachers reflect but uh, these aspects are not taken into consideration and the social factors are not considered so the the social factors in which we we operate or in which we uh, work is not given that importance when we say i i reflect so i reflect on my teaching ability but not on the other issues so there in the next role we talk about uh, teachers as transformative intellectual it's again intellectuals based on the educational philosophy of paulo freire a leading advocate of critical pedagogy so he uh, points out that there is a, a there's an urgent need for teacher and learner empowerment so it is not only that the learners need to be empowered but the teachers also need empowerment so the idea is to to ask uh, not just questions but to ask meaningful questions and to uh, to, to to make the uh, learning or make the learners personalize learning that is what is the next point to uh, he talks about lived experiences that teachers and learners bring to the educational setting so what kind of experiences that both teachers and learners bring to the educational setting is given a paramount importance and it is highly essential for teachers to connect whatever theories we we do on whatever practices we adopt to connect this to wider social issues so there are many social issues and if the learner finds okay fine if i could i could relate my learning to an to at least uh, not all classes we cannot do that but in some classes if we can relate to the social issues that uh, 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 that we uh, that, that we see often witness that i think would make learning much better that is what is the idea by calling teachers uh, giving the uh what to say placing teachers in such a high pedestal that they are transformative intellectuals they they are uh, they are intellectuals who are capable of transforming uh transforming what the lives of uh of of millions and millions of students again uh education in a country like india is seen as uh, the most important as the most powerful tool that uh to, that lifts uh, millions of learners from uh the kind of uh, life they lead you know it's a it's a it's a tool of a tool for emancipation as we can call it it's the only hope that the the learners have 
such the learners who come from such underserved communities. So he says it is it's, it's uh, essential that teachers, uh, you know, make this kind of you know take this particular role and uh, try try and change uh, the learners. One uh, the, the the I mean to knowledge yes that is definitely there, but if they can try and connect pedagogical theory and practice to wider social issues, that would largely benefit the uh, learners. So what is the task at hand? Again, the, the, the I mean, he sort of reiterates, he says like, teachers need to strive for educational advancement. That is that I think almost all of us do. And uh, uh, we, we just want the learners to uh, score pretty well in the examination. They want to, they want to learn, we want the learners to learn and equip. Yeah, exactly, exactly, that's very true. But plus he says, we, it's, it's essential that as teachers, we, we also have to take a look or give some importance or give equal importance to personal transformation. So uh, what, can, what can we do? We can focus more on their students, uh, on our students' needs, wants, and situations. So the situations and where they come from and construct a curricula and syllabi, but this particular uh, uh, point of view is again debatable because to what extent uh, do teachers have the liberty to uh, frame our own syllabus and to follow our own curriculum? Because I think in some uh, institutes, uh, I mean, the teachers are given that option. The teachers can offer a course and uh, the learners, whoever is interested, they can choose that particular course as an elective and they can uh, uh, study. But in in, uh, in almost in many, uh, majority of the uh, educational settings, I don't think this could happen, but uh, this is what would be uh, a better alternative is, is because in case if the teachers uh, are to be considered as transformative intellectuals and then use problem posing to uh, i mean pose sort of problems and consciousness raising activities so these two are given at most importance and create awareness it is that is what i think uh, he, he means by you know, to, to create awareness among i mean students about various forms of inequality and injustice in the wider society so there are a lot of issues i think uh, i think in the forum session we had a a, a lecture on uh, ecofeminism and what are the issues that uh, that that that, uh, that women grapple with, so these are uh, very essential when we uh, when we create awareness among us, our students to uh, to make them understand or make them aware of such issues which our society uh, grapples with, and then uh, we need to uh, try and address and uh, address these issues and find solutions in peaceful and meaningful ways that is the key word here so it is not that we uh, we, uh, we should encourage the students to uh, uh, you know like uh, to, to resort to other means but to make them aware to make them think to make them reflect at the same time create awareness and let them take a real look at some of the commonly held beliefs and assumptions and try and find some peaceful solutions and uh, in meaningful ways so, uh, so that's what a review of pedagogy by teachers is given paramount importance. So we have to take a relook at what we mean by pedagogy and what is my role as a teacher. That is what is one of the key ideas of critical pedagogies. And the role of a, a pedagogy is not just to enrich subject knowledge, but maximizing learning opportunities, which I think we, we, I, I discussed. And uh, more than knowledge or skills development, it is essential that we uh, transform uh, try our level best to transform the, the lives of our learners both inside and outside the classrooms in whatever little way we can and that is why uh, the teachers uh, have been assigned a, a radical role a radical role is assigned to teachers and uh, it is uh, the uh, it is uh, uh, juro uh, i'm not really sure of the pronunciation it is juro who uh, refers teachers as transformative intellectuals. So in this sense, uh, critical pedagogists advocate that we need to bring, in, uh, we, we, we have the, uh, the we are the, uh, to say, the, 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 the responsibility lies with the teachers to bring about a transformation in the lives of our learners. So I would like to uh, conclude my presentation by quoting Albert Einstein, which I thought it's quite uh, interesting and appropriate. The world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without 
changing our thinking uh, thank you so much for your patient listening if there are any questions i would be happy to answer them thank you Thank you, sir. That was a wonderful session. I'll now post select questions from the audience. Ms. Bhuvaneshwari would like you to elaborate on effective filter. Effective filter is nothing but a student's uh, second language learners, especially learners in uh, second language classroom. In this context, it is English. In English classroom, when you ask a question, even if the child knows the answer, he refuses, I mean, he is silent, he or she is silent. Why? Because he has anxiety or he or she in this context, uh, inhibition and that fear, a stress. So why these are the factors which prevent at least, I mean, learners who want to take that effort to learn, uh, to, to ask questions or to learn in an effective way. So affective filter is nothing but these uh, uh, factors. That's what Stephen Krashen talks about, mentions about affective filter. So if the affective filter is more, if the learner is inhibited, if he is uh, constantly reminded of making mistakes, if he says like, okay, if I speak in the class, I will definitely make mistakes. Or if I write, my, my, my teacher wants me to write. And uh, uh, when I write, then I will definitely make a lot of errors in terms of grammar as well as in terms of vocabulary, in terms of uh, sentence construction. Then he, he, what he does is he simply resorts to memory. He memorizes and he writes an answer and gets a pass. But then in a real life situation, when he is asked to write a letter, he finds it difficult. So, uh, I mean, uh, so this is what is, we mean by affective filter. Affective filter is these external factors which prevent a learner from learning a language when the, uh, that's what the affective filter is more then there is no learn language learning cannot happen thank you sir the next question yes madam dr siva subramanian wants to know the ways and means to strengthen the child's or the learner's critical thinking by modifying the existing syllabus in english teaching in particular yeah, so when it comes to uh, child uh, language learning, we have to be extremely careful because the uh, introduction of English, even as a, uh, as I wouldn't call it as a subject, introduction of English uh, as a policy, as a language policy was uh, debated. And we should not be in a hurry, especially when it comes to children. I think we can uh, just uh, allow them to be in their own worlds or instead of teaching something because children, they are very good. In the, the sense, in the sense, like very good. In the sense, like they are good at grasping things. And uh, again, uh, uh, the, to to give another example, uh, they they are in a situation to find what we you and as adults we cannot understand. So they understand it much better. So I don't think it's. I, I think it's quite early for us to uh, 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 think of a child to become a critical thinker because he has a long way to go. So. Uh, we can just let them uh, be children. So let them enjoy their childhood. Let them uh, have a lot of uh, memories. And uh, after a point of time, this thinking ability is definitely going to improve to a large extent. So uh, when it comes to children, I think we have to be extremely careful uh, to, to make them consciously do something. So that again defeats the whole purpose. That is what is my observation. Thank you, sir. Next question. How important or significant is critical thinking? And if so, depending on what your answer is, why most of the people lack critical thinking? And is it related with common sense? Yeah, co common sense and uh, critical thinking, I think uh, I don't find any parallels because uh, uh, sometimes we'll say you don't have common sense, but that is uh, uh, to say it is not that as. Uh, a complex as critical thinking basically because critical thinking we have to definitely place it on a higher level for example i can say if you uh, uh, if you go to a bookshop and if you just want to uh, take a book you say fine it's a it's a fairly good book my friend suggested you just pick a book and come but then if you want to uh, 
uh, uh, say like critically or if you want to uh, really think of is the book useful or uh, who's the publisher take a look at the reference section and then read the contents page in case if you have time just uh, flip through the pages then that becomes uh, critical thinking so we cannot just equate common sense with uh, critical thinking because i think they are should be placed on two different uh, uh, pedestals is definitely Thank you, sir. The next question from Ansa Prasad. They want to know if critical thinking is an inborn trait in an individual. Yeah, uh, to, uh, to an extent, yes. I would not say uh, to a large extent. Uh, in this context, I think I'm reminded of the critical period hypoth hypothesis. Uh, the CPH, as we call it in uh, linguistic terms, the critical period hypothesis says, because why I'm talking is critical think thinking and language, I told you, they, are, uh, they play almost uh, uh, the, the language ability of, the, of a child determines his thinking ability. So that's why I'm bringing this uh, theory of uh, CPH, that is critical period hypothesis. So the, uh, the, the, the CPH researchers, uh, what uh, I think it's, it's Leneberg, Leneberg, who was the first to introduce this uh, the, uh, approach or it's not an approach, it's an idea of CPH, critical period hypothesis. What he claims is there is a critical period for the child to learn a language. Uh, I think it's approximately till 10 or 12. Language learning happens best to a certain point. And beyond that, certain aspects of language cannot be mastered. So it is not that uh, all uh, aspects of language cannot be learned by uh, say a, a person about 12 or 15, but he says there are certain aspects which ca cannot be uh, effectively learned, especially when it comes to uh, the, the pronunciation. So pronunciation is one area where uh, uh, the, the CPH has been proved, critical period hypothesis has been proved, and the, the, the brain loses its plasticity. That is what is another claim. So the brain loses its plasticity and uh, thereby there is no scope for the learners to learn or pick up the language after 12. So they say it is be it's better between, uh, uh, I mean, uh, till 12, the window of opportunity. That's another, another term. The window of opportunity for language learning is, uh, uh, is open. And till then, language learning or acquisition can definitely happen in a much uh, better manner. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. The next question. How do you think cognitive skills play an important role in critical thinking? Yes, uh, cognitive uh, skills uh, uh, play a crucial role in critical thinking because without the cognitive ability, I don't think uh, anybody can, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, even, even at least think of critical thinking because your cognitive ability uh, decides everything. So again, uh, uh, to, 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 to quote again uh, uh, the verbal deprivation theory, it talks about we, 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 we talk so much about second language learning, but uh, research studies point out that uh, that it is essential that our, our learners should be uh, proficient in L1. So cognitive uh, the, the cognitive abilities need not be only with uh, when we, uh, I mean it's not to do with the second language or any language for the matter not I mean in this context it's English but he says the cognitive abilities of learners are not that developed some I mean not not all but the research studies the, the research is going on that their cognitive abilities are not fully developed even in, when, when it comes to why because uh, uh, I think I think it's uh, Bernstein's uh, uh, claim. What, what he calls it as the, the verbal deprivation theory, which says that uh, learners who come from uh, the, the, the uh, I mean, the, the underserved communities, they don't get enough opportunities even to uh, uh, improve their L1, that is their mother tongue. So mother tongue need not be L1, but I'm just uh, giving you that uh, they, they, they do not have their, uh, the faculty of language fully developed in their mother tongue. And to an extent, I, I would say it's true to an extent, but later on, this particular argument was refuted because in sometimes in our classes, when I, when I ask the learners to come and uh, share their views, and I say it is okay that even if, you, uh, if you're not very comfortable in using English, share your views in Tamil, they find it a bit difficult. So which means the cognitive ability of learner, we're not questioning the cognitive ability, but it has to an extent, there is some relationship between the cognitive ability of the learner and uh, critical thinking, because unless and until the cognitive ability of the learner is uh, 
modified to a to an extent they cannot aspire to become critical thinkers thank you so the next question how can one alleviate the fear of english language from students coming from the village and socially backward areas yeah the, the one and only answer would be uh, uh, give them the confidence it is perfectly all right for them to speak uh you know just words one or two words in english so we cannot uh, the the idea of you know just go and uh, practice with your friends and uh, stand in front of the mirror i really don't know to what extent it is practically possible because we know our learners the moment when a child makes an attempt to use english speak english others they sometimes they don't encourage them too much so uh, especially uh, learners in rural areas it is we should give them maximum that confidence and tell them it is perfectly all right that if you use english try and try your best so take those baby steps and even if you uh, make uh, errors errors in in terms of you know like construction and we, it's it's perfectly all right and we need and we should not point out errors pertaining to grammar or vocabulary or uh, for the matter not uh, we should not give importance because we have uh, the the idea of fluency versus accuracy in the initial stages fluency should be given utmost importance and not accuracy this is applicable even when it comes to writing when the students write even uh, to frame a single sentence is difficult for them it's a challenge for them so uh, when we just uh, tell them okay uh, the, uh, what you have written doesn't make sense that's going to put them off so give them yes you have uh, that is why again don't focus on the weaknesses focus on the strengths so you can say is a wonderful ideas the ideas you are, are wonderful but can you just try to revise or can you just uh, um, make it sound even more uh, better sometimes you know the the, the sentence uh, uh, would convey the meaning but it won't be appropriate but we can say yes you have conveyed the meaning but try but at least as time goes on just try to refine or revise your writing or try and make an effort to to answer basic questions in english not to do, uh, instead of uh, just giving one word answers you try because don't be afraid don't be an introvert if you are an introvert definitely you cannot learn the language shalini mukund would like you to elaborate on the jug and mug approach sir yeah a jug and mug approach is nothing but the teacher is uh, teachers jug is full that is what he means by jug is the the teachers uh, teacher has uh, knowledge overflowing and the learners mug is empty so the idea is the teacher is supposed to transfer or uh, transfer the knowledge and uh, ensure that the mug is full so this idea was again that's what this idea was questioned later on it is nothing but uh, it is somewhat similar i would say to the behaviorist idea of equating learners with just uh, you know like learners are um, uh, are uh, uh, learning happens by rote memorization and repetition so that is not the right approach later on cognitivists they refuted so jug and mug, mug approach is nothing but a uh, viewing or uh, uh, or the teachers uh, i mean or the, the learners should not think that the, the, the teacher yes the teacher is supposed to provide knowledge but is not now the only source of knowledge that is what is the idea here it is not the teacher has the knowledge and uh, uh, coming to class only because the teacher will share knowledge because beyond that there are many things which learners can learn that is what is jug and mug approach uh, to learning which is quite outdated now so uh, it is it is not uh, currently in mode i would say yeah four more questions sir yes ma how can we relate critical and creative thinking yeah so uh, uh, this is i think it's uh, the, the uh, it reminds me of uh, bloom's taxonomy of uh, the higher order uh, thinking skills uh, which is which is like uh, a critical think critical thinking skills which means like the learners the, the highest level i would say is creative thinking so once the learner uh, 
uh, uh, possesses these uh, these skills of, uh, for example, if the learner understands the concept and he starts, uh, when he first remembers, then he understands, then he starts to apply, then he analyzes, then he evaluates, then the highest uh, is the creative writing or to, to uh, creative creativity. So critical thinking, yes, in some ways, it is definitely beneficial, but it depends on the uh, on the kind of writing we do because uh, creative writing, as for the traditional definition, you know, if you uh, say, I can just give an example. If somebody wants to write a, a, a poetry or a poem, which we know it's uh, a general definition is to an extent based on imagination, but it need not be. Then uh, to, to apply logic uh, over there, uh, it doesn't uh, sound that right uh, because I'm reminded of uh, the, the famous line in Midsummer Night's Dream. The lunatic, uh, the, the lover and the poet are of imagination compact. So he says they all, all of them, they have uh, the same line of thought. So the lunatic is a mad person, the lover and the poet, they are, uh, the, the, they are, the, they are, their mental makeup is the same because whatever they speak is something uh, uh, doesn't have any logic. They say one thing and they behave in a different way. So it's from Midsummer Night's Dream when uh, it's, a, it's a romantic play by Shakespeare. That's what I'm reminded of. But to an extent, they are related, but uh, creative writing is definitely is one of the highest, uh, 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 highest of all the thinking skills. Thank you, sir. The next question from Tanish Power. Yeah. How can one differentiate critical thinking from lateral thinking? Yeah, critical thinking is, uh, yeah, as I told you, critical thinking is to, to evaluate a particular argument based on a lot of evidences and uh, a lot of uh, you know like uh, whether the whether the assumption whether it's an assumption whether it is a fact or whether it is an opinion whereas lateral thinking is thinking just out of the box so when you think out of the box when you allow yourselves you know to think generating ideas that is a lateral thinking whereas critical thinking we we are the 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 objective or the 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 point here is like they have to evaluate to make a judgment to make sound judgment that is the basic difference between lateral thinking and critical thinking thank you so the final question from richa tiwari mm -hmm. is it okay <clears throat> to use bilingual language for students in the classroom who do not have english as their mother tongue Yes, it's perfectly all right to use a bilingual approach in the classroom because after joining uh, Government Arts and Science College, I largely resort to the bilingual method of teaching. But again, uh, there are uh, the advocates of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a communicative language teaching or people who believe in this immersion technique, they would say no. So, uh, so it is, uh, to answer to your question, it is, perfectly all right to use a bilingual approach in the classroom because it is no point we delivering the lecture entirely in English with the learners uh, just giving us a blank look. But again, uh, a word of caution, when the learner knows for sure that uh, the teacher is going to repeat or use uh, the regional language or uh, I mean, whatever may be the regional language, then uh, he or she might not take the effort to try and understand whatever, uh, even, even some basic words, he might simply switch off because he'll say, anyway, uh, the teacher is going to uh, translate the lecture again in Tamil. So uh, uh, sort of we need to balance it, I would say. So uh, if the concept is really challenging, is, it's, if it's really difficult for you to get across to your learners, there's no harm in using a bilingual approach. Thank you. So there's another question I would like to pose. It's quite interesting. Yes, For that, we'll find the Q&A. How can one assess an individual who comes to an interview based on their critical thinking? Yeah, so uh, there are different uh, ways in which we can, uh, I mean, make them, uh, I, I don't know, like in an interview context, it's a very limited time. So we cannot uh, ask them, uh, we cannot assist them on the critical thinking skills except for some questions like how would you uh, react to a situation or uh, uh, for, for example you can ask like for example in case if you are uh, uh, if you're, you're working in a company and you know for sure that the decision which your manager has uh, taken is not that appropriate you have a better solution how would you 
uh, put across to him so how would you convince him so because uh, again uh, we again i read in, in in some journal i don't exactly remember wherein uh, we talk so much about critical thinking but uh, when a person one who joins uh, uh, newly joined for example i mean not newly joined uh, say for example just uh, five or five years before and there's a meeting going on and they're all uh, other, others are there in uh, in their uh, who are put in 20 or 25 years of experience when this uh, person wants to put across his views generally it is not heard his so her voice is not heard so we can ask this question so in the situation how would you think you can put across your views how would you use your uh, i mean in, in what way do you think you can uh, uh, convince the, your, your manager or the management that the idea which you have will solve the problem i think it's one of the ways in which we can uh, test the uh, the thinking ability or the critical thinking ability of the prospective candidate hello am i audible sorry thank you for the questions answer sir that will be it for the q and a if you have any closing remarks you can place it now sir. yeah so it's a wonderful opportunity and uh, i would uh, really like to thank again the uh, the management principal uh, dean and head of the department of english and all the members of the faculty for giving me this wonderful opportunity for interacting with uh, learned audience thank you so much thank you so much sir i thank you on behalf of the organizing committee and truly appreciate the effort you've taken and for going an extra mile through your kindness and generosity to end the teaching fraternity you may leave the room now sir we'll get in touch with you shortly thank you thank you sir Now, participants, the link to post your attendance and feedback form has been shared in the chat box. Your participation will be validated upon filling in this form. This link will be active until another thirty minutes. Kindly fill in before the time lapses.